I don't distinguish patellar rotation. That's my personal bias. I don't know if Eric has an opinion on that or not. When Jenny wrote her original article back in 1980 something, she felt that you could adjust the rotational angle, the Q angle, if you will, of the patella with tape. None of the studies that we looked at this morning show that we can adjust even before you activate the quads very effectively adjust rotation. So I don't include that. But what you're looking for, if you're looking at rotation just for your own expertise, is the inferior pole of the patella relative to the superior pole of the patella. If the Q angle is too large, then the superior pole is medialized. And they're rub twisted like that. Okay? But even if they are, like I said, I don't think tape can correct that, so I don't fool with the, with the rotary component. The main two components are tilt and ride. The relative tilt of the patella is assessed both in a seated posture and in a supine posture, and you do need to lay them down, not have them sit up. Because when people sit up, they tend to activate their muscles so they can see, and that changes the orientation. So the first thing you want to do is just wiggle the patella a little bit and make sure they're relaxed. Right? So, tilt. You've got to have the femur, femur neutrally rotated, and you're looking at elevation of the medial versus the lateral fold. I don't know what you can see from where you are. From where I are, the medial pole is elevated. So if you lay your finger on it, and I've never seen it really done with a level, it is a slightly concave surface, but if you had something relatively flat and laid it on there flat, if I lay it across the main part of the face of her patella, you can see the reflex hammer is slightly higher here than it is here. So we know we have lateral tilt chances are we're going to have some lateral tracking, which means we probably have tightness of the lateral retinaculum. Possibly, what else? IT band, because there's a slip of the IT band to the lateral patella, right? Could have incompetence of the patellofemoral ligament medially. I showed you a reconstruction of that this morning. And I am seeing more reconstructions, by the way, of medial patellofemoral ligament. It's cool to see. So we know she's laterally tilted. Next thing we assess is glide. Is she sitting fairly neutral? If you feel the medial and lateral poles of the patella and just go straight posterior, you should make contact with the femoral condyles at about the same time as she's sitting in the middle. If you feel the medial sooner than the lateral, she may be hiding the lateral because she's laterally glided. With me? Possible she would have some medial glide as well. And in her case, her tilt's off, but her glide is, is not too bad, okay? Then the other thing I mentioned to you is Voigt and Tippett's work that they'll do. It's, I don't think it's very easy to pick up visually, but they'll ask them to contract their quads. She's got a nice VMO, relax, contract. So what I'm trying to see is, is does the VMO activate sooner? Boyd and Tippett said you can visualize it, but it's better measured if you have surface EMG, seeing which muscles fire in first. And it is a neat test to do. I think you're better off trying to look at the patella. But as she contracts, it is going to pull quickly to the outside, so it's a little hard to pick up there. Okay? So I'm going to want you to assess the patellar glide and patellar tilt. And I don't care if you look at rotation. I want you to look at frog guide and squinting patella know what that means to us clinically. I want you to look for a J sign. I haven't done compression and apprehension sign yet. But the apprehension sign is actually somewhat simpler, similar to the glide component. And the other test that's part of that is Perkins. So part of the glide then, the second part, is not just the original orientation, but then also the amount of total translation. How much is normal? Yeah, half's pushing it. So about a quarter, but up to a half, depending.
depending on the relative flexibility of the individual. So, most of them, if they are unstable, are unstable laterally. So we're going to start with medial, right? And I can go, if there's your patella in a neutral position, I can only go about a quarter of a patella. So I can now feel the lateral edge of the condyle below my thumb. While I'm there, remember that pinch test where you just compress the synovium up against the bottom of the patella? And you ask them if it hurts. Does that bother you? And she's not symptomatic today. If she has a history of subluxation and we sent her for a five mile run and brought her back, that might well be positive, right? Can you even go into details about that? side here. So now I'm going to do a lateral glide something like that. <laughs> so that confirms what she gave us in her history. The test, and I don't have to do it because I already know she hurts. That hurts. Then you're just pinching up against the inferior portion. So there's a medial perkins and a lateral perkins. And it's not a test for patellofemoral disease. It's a test for synovitis, which goes hand in hand with patellofemoral disease. can occur with other pathologies as well. Perkins the pinch test? Pinch. Okay. Apprehension is when the patient and I go to glide her, does that bother you? Yeah. No. Does that bother you? <laughs> so that's both a positive Perkins when I pinch it, but also a positive when you say that one, though, apprehension. Isn't it her here first, like it was going to dislocate? That's where an apprehension yeah. is. makes a, a, a correct point. I wouldn't do a Perkins if I have a positive apprehension. I wouldn't need to, right? So she's got a positive apprehension, which is indicative of subluxation at least, and possibly dislocation. And we're real worried about re-dislocating her. So when does she dislocate? from extension to flexion. So it's usually during an eccentric contraction. Very good. Right? So I don't, if she's positive for apprehension, that now trumps everything else in our assessment. Right? That first rule we have to do is protect her from subluxation. So when will she not sublux? Past 90. Or 54.30, right? If we wanted to work on her quads a little bit. Yes, sir. I was just going to ask uh, the clinical relevance of squinting and frog eye patella. Is that just valgus of the knee? Well, no, it could be tight retinaculum. It could be a whole lot of things. It tells you that the patella is not tracking normally. Okay, but is it, what, what is it? Well, the patella is. If they're squinting, then in that resting position, they're going to be medialized, okay. probably medial tilt. Okay. When you put them up in a, in a seated position, then they become frog eyed. It means they're coming basically, they're subluxing. Okay, what else do we need to assess here that I didn't put on the board? IT band. What other muscle I told you? Hamstrings. Very good. Hamstrings in particular. Now, first of all, women get patellofemoral problems two to one over men. Again, all the stuff we talked about earlier today with pelvic width and femoral torsion and antiversion and all that. But we're still, and women, fortunately, don't have near the trouble with hamstrings that men do. And she's clearly got pretty good hamstrings, but we still want to address them. So 
I didn't notice any, and she has nice BMO, good tone, good control. So a lot of her program may be relative to stretching some of the retinaculum in her knee, working on some of the tightness, and always quads, even if they test relatively normal, we're always going to try to accentuate that BMO.